pray that you give us the ears to hear, give us the mind to understand. And we pray that you uncover your word, reveal your word to us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. But it's here in the Gospel of John, and the Word of God says in chapter 4, verse 21. Jesus says unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. And we're talking about worship. We're talking about how to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? You worship ye not... Excuse me. I'm reading out of the King James. It says... E worship ye know not what. In other words, he was saying, you don't know what you worship, amen? We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Amen. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him in spirit, excuse me, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Amen. And I believe that we need to learn how to worship God. Amen. Many of us. You know, we come into the kingdom of God and we really don't know how to worship God. Amen. Like there's many of us that we could have came from a gangster lifestyle. Amen. And you're, you know, you go before the Lord and you're like, Orale Lord, you will Lord, Orale Lord. Amen. And you're just, you know, you're praising him and you're, you know, you feel like, okay, I'm getting my breakthrough because, you know, uh, we're worshiping him with our old lifestyle, you know. But the Bible teaches us how to worship God. Amen. In other words, when we worship God, we need to worship God with knowledge, with truth. The Bible tells us what the truth is. The truth is the word of God. Jesus says, my word is the truth. Amen. So how do we worship God? We worship God with information. We worship God with knowledge. Amen. The Bible teaches us how to worship God. Amen. We can't just worship God with our own ideas or our own concepts. Amen. The Bible gives us clear instructions of how to worship God. Amen. And what I want to talk about today is communion amen the bible tells us to do communion amen and what is communion communion is worshiping god amen so let's go to first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 and it says for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he braked it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So here, Jesus commands us, amen, to have communion to do communion but what is the purpose of communion is to remember what jesus did for us on the cross amen is to remember that he died for us that he gave us his flesh that he gave us his blood that he justified us that he stood in our place amen he took our place of punishment, amen, that we may take on his righteousness. Listen to this, verse 25. After the same manner, 
also he took the cup and when he had sub saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do e as often as you drink it in remembrance of me so what's the purpose of communion is that we worship the lord remembering what he's done for us amen matter of fact when uh he changed the covenant the new covenant it was during it was during that time of the passover and in the old testament amen whenever they had the passover they would sacrifice the lamb amen and they would actually sacrifice a real lamb and eat the flesh of that lamb and it was symbolic to what jesus was going to do for his people for us amen but it was also the passover amen when the angel of death amen when that angel came in into egypt amen the angel of death that whoever had the blood on their doorposts that angel passed over amen see i want to encourage you tonight to let you know that jesus christ is the passover amen and if you have the lord in your home in your boat in your business in your life no matter what's happening in this world amen it needs to pass over you amen see communion is so powerful because god promises to protect you amen when you read john the gospel of john chapter 6 verse 48 to verse 58 talks about how he is the bread of life amen and through us taking communion through us eating his flesh and drinking his blood and when he was talking he was talking about the spirit amen he says the flesh profited nothing but i'm talking about the things of the spirit amen and what is his flesh it's his word it's the word of god when we eat the word of god when we receive the word of god and we receive jesus amen and we receive what he's done for us on the cross amen and when we believe he promises us eternal life amen but what are what are we to do how are we to worship god in communion it's to remember that he died for us amen that jesus paid the price amen no one's saved by their own works, amen. No one's saved by their own merits, but we are saved by the grace that comes only through Jesus Christ, amen. Jesus Christ came to bring grace and truth, amen. So that's what communion is, but I want to talk about tithing, amen. See, communion was something that the Lord commanded us to do, amen. And it's an act of worship. And communion is that we remember what he did for us. But listen to this. Tithing, when we tithe, we actually acknowledge that Jesus lives on. Amen? That he lives on as our high priest. Amen? That is able to forgive us, to redeem us, to empower us to protect us amen i want to talk about that right now so let's go to the book of hebrews amen chapter seven and we're going to talk about jesus christ the priesthood of jesus christ on the first verse it says for this is melchizedek king of salem priest of the most high god who met abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him so what does jesus do what does the priest melchizedek what does he do is that he blesses his people amen and it says here to whom also abraham gave a tenth part of all see abraham is the one that originated the tithe so you got to understand that the ten percent did not come from the mosaic law amen it has uh nothing to do with the mosaic law the 10 percent came from the law of faith 
Amen. He gave out of faith. Amen. Abraham gave because he believed God. He believed in Jesus. Amen. He gave because he was a worshiper. He gave because he loved God and he, uh, he adored God and he understood that it was God that gave him the victory. Amen. See, so you need to know that it's God who's putting you in that position of success. That it's God who's putting you in that position of victory. Amen. It's God that raised you up. You need to know that. That it's God that has provided for you. You need to know that you're only alive because it's God that is holding you together. Amen. And it's talking about the high priest here. And it says, to whom Abraham also gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation, the king of righteousness. And after that, the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the son of God, abideth a priest continually. See, it's talking about Jesus that here this priest, they couldn't trace him. Amen. They couldn't trace his genealogy. They didn't know where he came from. Amen. Uh, they couldn't figure out, okay, uh, who his parents were. But this was the son of God. And that's like that's just like our Lord. Amen. Whenever Jesus wants to show up, he will show up. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Psalms that his way is in the waves. Amen. It was Jesus that when the disciples and, you know, the disciples, the apostles were in a storm, amen, that he showed up, amen. In the storm, he walked on the water, amen. See, I want to encourage you tonight to let you know that, you know, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at, that Jesus will show up, amen. Uh, you don't need a sign from heaven. Amen. Uh, you know, you don't need a phone call. You don't need someone to warn you. Whenever God shows up, he's just going to show up. Amen. You just need to know that he will show up. Amen. In that time of need. Amen. And listen to this. I'm going to jump right into the scripture I want to talk about today. We're talking about how to worship God with knowledge. Amen how to worship God in spirit and truth. Amen. And it says here in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8, And here men that die receive tithes. This, this is the purpose. I want you to understand this. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is a witness that he liveth. Amen. Who is it talking about? It's talking about the high priest, Jesus Christ, in the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Whenever we worship God with our tithe and our offering, we are going back to that time where Abraham gave his 10% to Melchizedek, the high priest. Amen. That's where this comes from, amen? And when you give your tithe, what you're saying is, God, I'm worshiping you with this type of faith that I believe that you live on as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, amen? See, you need to know that it's the high priest that gives you atonement. What is atonement? Is that he forgives you. He gives you redemption. Amen. And here when you study the word of God, it was the high priest that blessed, that blessed Abraham. I'm getting excited about this. But you know what? God just gave this to me right now. He didn't just bless him. Listen to this. He didn't just bless him, but he gave him communion. Amen. When Jesus came out as a priest, he came out with the bread and the wine. Amen. 
And did you know that, the, again, the bread and the wine represents the body of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, but it also represents the promise of eternal life. Amen. What he was telling Abraham is that I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to bless you with life. Amen. Jesus came to give life and life in abundance. That's why we don't need to operate in fear. We don't need to fear what men is going to do or how this world's going to turn out. We just need to know that God is with us and that we have eternal life, but not just eternal life. See, because you need to know that your, your eternal life starts here on earth. Amen. And God has a purpose for you here on earth. Amen. He has a purpose for you to be a voice. He has a purpose for you to preach. Amen. He has a purpose for you to love people, to bless people, to forgive people. Amen. God has a purpose for your life. But we need to learn how to worship God in spirit and with knowledge. Amen. He has taught us how to worship him. So when you give, you need to know that it's an act of faith. And the purpose why we're giving is that every time we, tith we tithe, we are declaring that Jesus still lives on in the order of Melchizedek as the high priest. Amen. And if he still lives, you need to know that he still has the power to bless you. Amen. So you need to know this is that God is not a man that he needs to lie. No matter what's going on in the world, if we're obedient to God's word, God will bless his word. God will keep his promises. I don't care if it's, you know, right now we're in the time of tribulation. If we're entering in the apocalypse, amen, is, is, is no matter what's going on in the world, if you obey God's scripture and he gives you a promise with that scripture, he will make that promise come to pass. Amen. So this is the awesome thing about God is that when we worship him, amen, he promises blessing. Amen. When he was talking about communion, amen, when we take communion, he promises us eternal life. Amen. That's, that is a gift from God. Amen. But when you pay your tithe and your offering, amen, he promises you increase. Amen. As a matter of fact, let's go to the word of God. I'm, I'm almost done. It's here in um, Malachi. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. And the word of God says, Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meet in my house and prove me now herewith says the Lord of hosts if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it see he promises to bless us whenever you tithe he promises an open window from heaven to bless you so much an overflowing blessing that you will not be able to receive all that blessing. He promises us abundance. Amen. Listen to this. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit. 
before its time in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all the nations shall call you blessed, and you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. See, he promises to bless you. He, promised you to, he promises to make you great, to make you a delightsome a person, a delightful land, amen. Uh, he promises to rebuke the devourer, amen. I don't know what's coming against you, but when you are a tither, the Lord will rebuke the devil, amen. The Lord will rebuke the locusts, amen. The Lord will bless your life, amen. You know, it was Jesus, it was Melchizedek that spoke to Peter. And he told Peter, Peter, the devil desires to destroy you, to swift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail, fail you. And it's Jesus that stands in the gap for us, that prays for us. Amen. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, to boldly come to the throne of grace. And it's talking about coming to the high priest, coming to Jesus, that he is able to help us with our infirmities. He's able to help us with our weaknesses, amen? Uh, frailties is talking about the weaknesses with our flesh, amen? You know, are you going through a struggle? Are you going through a battle, amen? Abraham came out of a battle. He paid his tithe, amen, and Jesus came out with bread and wine and had communion with him and blessed him. Amen. Today I'm talking about how to worship God in according to his word, how to worship God in truth and knowledge. Amen. He teaches us to keep communion, but he also teaches us to pay the tithe and the offering and its worship. See, nobody could manipulate us or force us to give. Amen. It has to come from your heart, amen. It has to come from within, amen. It needs to come from a grateful heart, amen. There's many people that might be bitter, amen, and they might not want to give, amen, or they're doubtful, amen, and these are the people that have a problem with giving, amen. Whenever someone gives, it's an act of love, and you need to know that when you give your tithe and offering, it's an act of love. More than anything, it's worship. And this is the type of worship it we're talking about in the Gospel of John, to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. It's talking about to adore, amen? You're saying, God, I adore you. God, you mean more to me than anything, amen? And when you put God first, and we're talking about your finances, when you put God first with your finances, amen, he says, you don't have to worry about anything, amen. That's where we get that scripture, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. What is it talking about? It's talking about your giving, amen. When you put God first, when you truly know how to worship God, amen, God will bless you. Let me just say this, amen. The word of God is full of blessing, amen. And, you know, whenever you give, amen, whenever you give, God promises to bless you when you, whenever you give an offering amen god promises to supply all of your needs according to his glory and riches you know you could give god a 20 here or 30 here but listen to this whenever you give god 10 10 percent of your earnings 10 percent of your earnings there's an open window you could only get an open heaven when you're obedient to God's word, amen? You could only have an open heaven, you could only get an open heaven when you pay your tithe, amen? And who are you supposed to give your tithe to, amen? You're supposed to give your tithe to your local church, amen? To the church that you're going to, amen? You might not, you might say, well, you know, why should I tithe? The church is closed, amen? Well, you can give your tithe to your pastor, amen? Because the word of God says, excuse me, is that the people 
brought the tithe to the feet of the apostles. And that's in the New Testament. Amen. You know, in this season, I encourage you to walk in faith. Amen. And watch what God does in your life. You know, me and my wife, you know, uh, we practice paying our tithe and paying our offering. And, and since we've been paying our tithes and paying our offerings, God has rebuked the devourer. Amen. Don't get me wrong. We do have, you know, our ups and downs. We do hit, you know, speed bumps. But I'm telling you, God rebukes the devourer. Amen. Just the other day, we had a problem with our car. And we're very busy. Amen. So we need our car running 24-7. And the mechanic that I usually go to, amen, that, 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 that I uh, usually go to that mechanic is that he wasn't able to fix my car, amen. And, you know, and he we had to wait, amen. And praise God, my, my wife made a phone call and we actually found within that hour another mechanic that was actually a better mechanic and he was a believer, amen. And I'm telling you, you know, God will not miss a beat. You know, God has blessed me and my wife where we're able, you know, we were able to keep our jobs, you know, where our jobs supernaturally became essential. Amen. And during during this, um, you know, uh, uh, pandemic, amen, when everybody was losing their jobs, God protected us because we paid our tithe. Amen. And this is how we do it. Me and my wife do it is that, you know, as soon as, you know, because I get direct deposit. As soon as my money comes in, amen, because the Bible says to give God your first fruits, is that as soon as I receive my money in my account, before I buy anything, before I go to uh, Jack in a Box or McDonald's, amen, or before, uh, you know, I, I, I do anything with my money, is I pay my tithe because I believe in putting God first, amen, automatically, amen. I, I, I send my tithe, amen, and I feel a sense of blessing. I know that God is with me. I know that God is going to rebuke the devourer, amen. I feel and sense the favor of God. I sense that I am partnering with God, amen, and I encourage you, amen, to trust the Lord, to keep on putting God first, and you're going to see God open up the windows of heaven in your life. See, the, don't even complain. If you haven't tried it, amen. There's people that, you know what, uh, they they feel that they've tried it, amen, and they haven't gotten the blessing yet, amen. But let me encourage you is that this is a covenant, amen. This is my time's up. I got two, two minutes. But this is a covenant. In other words, this is a commitment, amen. And I believe that if you make a commitment to worship God, in spirit, but not just in spirit, but with knowledge, with truth. What is the truth? It's the Word of God, and the Word of God has instructions. God teaches us how to worship Him. Honestly, I, I really believe that the problem that our nation is going through, amen, and I'm talking about um, the famine, I'm talking about people that are losing their jobs is that they're not paying their tithes. Amen. They're not giving to God. I believe that if you put God first with your finances and you start tithing, amen, if you don't know where to tithe, pray and ask God to show you where to give your tithe. You know, be led by the Spirit, amen. A matter of fact, even if you want to give to our church, if you don't have a church and you feel that you're getting encouraged by these videos, amen. You're welcome to give to our church, amen. And and this is good soil. And honey, would you be able to give out that website where they could give? Yes, you can give through PayPal and it's paypal.me slash gospel kingdom TV. Again, you could give through PayPal and our PayPal address is paypal, that's P-A-Y-P-A-L dot M E slash G O S P E L K I N G D O M T V. Amen. And I believe that if you do this by faith, that God 
will bless you. And I'll tell you why. It's because God blesses his word. His word's already blessed, amen? But when we're obedient to the word of God and we act in faith, amen, God will bless you. He says, try me in this, amen, to test him in this, amen. And I'm telling you, you're going to see God open up doors for you, amen. You're going to see God bring a shift, amen. You know, we serve a good, good God, amen. And I believe that God is calling you. He's calling us to worship him in spirit and in truth, amen. Let's remember this is when we have communion, amen, when we take the bread and the wine, when we receive and we eat the flesh of Jesus and we drink the blood of Jesus, symbolic, amen, to the bread and the wine is that we remember him. It's an act of remembering what he did for us. But when you pay your tithe, it's an act of saying, we know that Jesus lives on in the order of Melchizedek as the high priest, amen. And it's Jesus that has the power to bless your life. Matter of fact, let me just say this. When you open up the book of Hebrews, it talks about how powerful Jesus is and it says that he's the one that created the world amen if you want to have more knowledge of that go to the book of Colossians amen and it talks about how he created the world I just want to say this is that how he holds everything together did you know that even scientists say that uh, as you know as humans they're made of atoms I mean they're made of these tiny little molecules that are how together they don't know how it's how together but the bible tells us here in hebrews that it's jesus that is holding the universe together that's holding us together it's the high priest that is holding you together let me just say this see you can't die because it's jesus that is holding you together amen uh, you, you're not gonna lose your mind you're not gonna fall apart because it's jesus that is holding you together. Be encouraged. It's Jesus that got you. Amen. Father, I just pray that you bless every person that is watching this video, that you empower them, that you encourage them, and that you quicken us that we could worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen.